Welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm on my way to the harness shop today. So here we are coming into the harness shop. Um, this is Eli and Eli does my shoeing for me also. So um, he is, he's been very good about allowing me to show some videos on shoeing. And uh, he has mentioned earlier, he would probably let me do some videos on his harness shop if I was careful about how I did it of course and so I will I will run in and see if he is still um, willing to let me to do that I see there's a truck out there so I'm not gonna ask well somebody else is there so and he may not even be here but uh, let's go see so it was good time and he's in the shop and working away so we'll see what he can do here I brought up the back pad uh, for the Colts, a back pad, yeah. Here I brought up the belly girth for the Colts. So if you could make basically the same thing, but make it two inches longer. Mm -hmm. But I got a question here. So this is what goes, you're more used to these type of harnesses than I am because I'm used to the D-ring harnesses. Right. So this is what we have and that everything looks right there, right? Yeah. It's actually more like, be like yeah. that, yeah. right? But, but there's a ring here. How, does that just, it, do, it doesn't hitch to the belly girth at all? No, no. You've so just those two straps, just comes one snaps yeah. there? Yeah, what we call the quarter straps. They come from the breaching down, they snap into this. One on each side? One on each side, Okay. yeah. Uh, for some reason I had it in my head that it was still connected somehow to the belly girth, but the belly no, girth... No, no, the belly okay. girth just... So does the belly girth go underneath like that? Just like that, Okay. Yeah. All right. like that and these don't have to be tight they just kind of right right hold everything in right place. right the colts are growing so fast that's why i just wanted this would work mm -hmm. uh, i mean this is the other one right um but it's just i might as well get a couple inches on the thing just to uh, have a little bit more yeah, yeah. now how come this is that's supposed to be even though right yes this here slides it yeah actually slides okay there. All right. i'm not planning on using this harness because the these colts, I'm pretty sure, will outgrow it fairly fast. Oh, yeah. And then I'd like to get you to make me a new set for mm -hmm. them, you know, in a year, year and a mm -hmm. half from now. Yeah. But, uh, so anyways, if you've got time I've got to time. slap that together, okay. make that one. We can do that. Perfect. Eli is fairly new um, with this shop. He actually took it over from his father, or his father had another shop somewhere else. And he uh, wants to cut back, and so Eli is starting to do more for the Amish community and the English community from people like myself. And as I think about this, there's a lot of people, even in my area, that know me and might not know where e Eli is. And I just wanted to, s I'm not going to say where he is, but, but if you were to message me or get hold of me, then I could explain to you where he is, because I'm sure he'd be more than willing to have more business. And uh, I can vouch for him, he does a great job. So he does have some halters here in stock. I know a friend of mine from Vermont stopped in here, and by the way, hi Mike. And uh, he wanted to come up here after he, after he visited with me, and uh, he did. And Eli didn't have the size halter that he wanted, so he was willing to just um, make it for him and send it down to him. So that worked out really great. But a lot of the us local people uh, will be coming here and, and he does everything, you know, he has, he has the halters, he makes totally new harnesses. These are some new harnesses he is making up right now and you're, you're still waiting on parts? I'm like? still waiting on parts. He said just like everybody else, he's, all these parts aren't getting shipped in properly and whatnot, so he's waiting on parts. And that's why these harnesses are still sitting here. There's just one, a few minor things that are missing and then he'll have it ready for his customer. So he does all this and I'm assuming you make even things like belts for people, right I Eli? I do, yeah. I'm, belts I'm, and whatever else, zippers and jackets, I guess whatever else I can stitch on my sewing machines. Right, and with, you're starting to get a lot more material here uh, in stock with buckles and snaps yeah, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Which is yeah. great. He even has some repairs. This is, he was telling me the other day, this is a, a show harness from a guy that he brought over. And, and uh, did you make these, Eli? Or they, that's how it came up? No, those, those came, yeah. He's got those uh, rosettes on there. Yeah. As you can see, the, the strap that holds it in place is tore. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yep. I'm make a new strap for that. So he's fixing and patching and repairing things for people all the time. 
I have explained that other video I stopped in here the other day. Well, this is a while ago, Eli. And nobody was here, and I just showed him the line shaft. Oh, yeah. The line shaft was open up, and so now he's going in there to start his motor up, I'm assuming. And uh, so the Amish, of course, have no electricity, so they have to have a little gas motor to run everything. That runs a line shaft. That runs a line shaft. It's actually a diesel motor. This is a diesel motor? This is a, yeah, this really? is one slow okay. diesel. How many horsepower? Nine. Wow. That's the hand clutch they used to in gate. Oh, neat. Yep. So this is a line shaft. So this, this pulley here, this shaft right here goes underneath the floor, right through here. And then it connects the pulleys to run each of the, each of the different sewing machines that he has. And maybe we can get him to explain a few things as to why he has three sewing machines and what they do do. So he has the one belly girth laying on the table with the new one that he's going to make right beside it to get the measurements. And these are just nylon, which is fine for what I'm doing. When I have him make down the road the new harness for me, it will be all bio, which is what I prefer. I want to show you something here. So in the same room that he has his motor, he also has this uh, piece of equipment. I don't know what it's called. I should have asked Eli what it's called, but it's got a, a propane heater and it's got a hot spot here. And this whole thing is hot actually. And he uses it to, um, with the nylon to um, heat the ends of the nylon so they don't fray. And uh, that little thing that's sticking out, that's what he uses to, um, punch in holes but he said it wasn't really hot enough to do a good job in the holes yet you gotta let it heat up for quite a while but he was able to do these slotted pieces on the nylon and it just burns them so they don't fray and that's what he's doing here these two things are in this room obviously because there's a ventilation so that the fumes go outside and the smell from the Burton nylon goes outside also. It does stink quite bad. It's awful nice in here with his wood stove that he has to keep it nice and warm in here. Last winter I showed a couple of videos of Eli shoeing my horses and he did it right here in this building. And of course now he had to fix it all up and turn it into a harness shop. Now he does his shoeing up in another barn. Is this just to keep the kids out? Yeah, well, no, the box is to keep the kids and the dog. But just here I was stitching holders one day and it was hanging down. Yeah, no, oh, oh my goodness. Before I knew it, I had a, a holder wrapped right around Oh the my goodness. Yeah, I never thought about so that. This is temporary for now. Yeah. Where's your dog? Dog's in the house. So you have three machines here. What is the purpose of the three machines? That one right there does like the, the bioplastic, the leather, and if I get it like heavy, heavy nylon. This one here. We'll do like the halters and uh, the other light material. Halters mainly. So you're threading it now, I'm I see. It right now, yeah. now it seems like every time I come, you're threading it. Does that because you change threads change quite often? Threads for color of material. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and. Uh, now, are these a lot different than? women's sewing machines that they have uh that like your your wife's sewing machine in the house yes to, to, re, to re-thread them though is it sort of the same basically the same for deal, yeah. re and you got a thread on the top and the bottom yeah this here's they call this the bobbin and uh, that gets your bottom so that's why you're taking it out because that's red and you want the black yeah, i want the black do you break needles very often or 
So you got a bunch of needles in here. <laughs> I, uh, I used the right size needle. There again, you use needle size for your material. Uh -huh. Let's say the heavier your material is, the heavier needle you want. Uh, I was sewing halters yesterday, and I had a light needle in because it, it actually runs smoother with a light needle. Okay. You get up to where it's like three ply and around the buckles, I ended up breaking the needle. So like, you just gotta put it in heavier. Right. I'd love to come sometime when you're sewing some heavy tugs or traces. Yeah, it's that a, can be interesting in itself. I can imagine. <laughs> It's amazing how different places of the country call things differently. Yeah. You guys always call traces traces, correct? Or um, no, we actually call them tugs. You do call them tugs, because I always call them tugs, but I thought, seems like most people around the world, I've been told, call them traces. So. Yeah, I'll be with you guys in a little bit. He's putting the what do you call that? Keeper. Putting or the loop. Keeper, the loop in there and sewing it all together. This side here it's partially in. On the one side. so nice to have a harness shop right close by. I'm pretty spoiled. I can come up here and quite often, if he's not too busy, he can just do what I need done right off and makes it great. So. Just cinching the end to that thread down because I guess he cleans it up a little bit more. What stops it from going back in too, it, right? Right, that it does help a lot of that. Pretty good. Perfect. I thank you very much. Not a problem, Jim. We'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Yep. Okay, I'm so glad to get that done. I'm so glad for that Eli is allowing me to show these videos of what him and also the other Amish community, they've been very, very good about allowing me to come in and, and do some videos of them. I, I have to be very careful to try not to get any, you know, poses with them their face in the picture and uh, that's sometimes a challenge but uh, I so much appreciate them allowing me to do this so I want to show you one other thing that got done today okay we're on our way down into the big town of Malone to pick up my truck um, Brenda's give me a ride down there as most of you might know I bought a new truck not new but it was a couple year old truck this summer and uh, I have needed a snowplow on it 
and I've been kind of looking for one and I finally found a second hand one it's a V plow which I'm quite excited about because I know they're they're great plows to have those V plows and I do a lot of of plowing down into my log jobs and such and with drifts that we have up here the V plows can be really really nice so anyways we're gonna head in to Snell equipment and pick that up a good friend of ours is actually I believe the manager there if, if he's not we'll call him the manager anyways uh, he definitely works there and he's who we'll, we will probably be dealing with he's gonna go through all the basics of of this new plow and and there again it's not new it's a few years old but it's gonna they've got it on our truck and it's ready to plow snow so that's great we'll see what we see what it looks like good thing you're doing it because it's spitting snow won't yeah long, yeah it won't it won't be long so here we are at Snell equipment I don't see my truck hopefully it's inside because they have to explain everything about it so we'll go in and find out so here's my new plow on my truck not new plow like I said it's second hand but it's well maintained and uh, I'm liking it so now I'm ready to go plow some snow. So I hope you enjoyed the video for today. We'll see you next time.